welcome to today's episode of Candid Kaya. Today, I am here with former Atlanta Hawks cheerleader, mompreneur, and founder of one of Atlanta's newest dance studio, Move More Studios. She is going to tell us more about how you can start your own dance company. Stay tuned. Well, hello, Jasmine. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on today's episode. Let's start with just letting the viewers know about yourself. Okay. Uh, so my name is Jasmine Walker. I am 27 years old. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I've been living in Atlanta, Georgia for about 15 years. I graduated from Spelman College, where I pledged Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and served as Miss Maroon and White for Morehouse College. Um, upon graduation, I started my own dance studio and mobile dance studio. Um, I also danced for the Atlanta Hawks and cheered for them for two seasons, and now I am a proud mother of a two-year-old. Perfect. So you mentioned that you are the owner of a few dance studios and dance businesses. Tell us a little bit more about those businesses. Okay, so um, More Mirrors Dance Company is a mobile dance studio where we partner with preschools, after school programs, um, and elementary schools. So we teach dance, share fitness. Um, to kids two years old and up um, our mobile that's our mobile studio and then we also have a location studio called move more studio in Austell Georgia um, and we pretty much cater to all ages teaching dance chair and fitness as well okay so what is the mission of those businesses so basically our goal was to provide something that's affordable convenient okay. and exceptional so all of our teachers mm -hmm. have either been um, a dancer for the Atlanta Hawks or Atlanta Falcons or Alvin Ailey to some degree they're a professional and they love what they do um, and then we just make sure that it's very very affordable for parents especially those single moms out there who just need a little bit extra help okay Good to know. Tell us more about what inspired you to start your dance company. So what inspired me to start my dance company was um, just being a child of a single parent. Um, back when I was growing up, my mom couldn't afford us to take dance classes and do cheerleading because it was just so expensive and she was a single parent. Um, so I used to spend time in the bathroom dancing in the mirror um, and I taught myself how to dance and cheer. And so finally I was able to go to high school and audition for things and I was making it. So I was like, hmm, this is something I need to do for the community later on. And that's exactly what I did. So I started a, a program that was affordable and convenient for those parents and those kids who are very, very passionate in dance, cheer, and fitness as well. Okay. So I got a side note question. Yeah. Have you ever not made a team? <laughs> um, no. Oh, I did not make the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, that was the, one of the first professional teams that I tried out for, and I did not make it. And what I learned from it was, you know, that I really had to stay focused on the end goal. Um, so at the time, I don't think I was at that prepared. I could have prepared more as far as fitness-wise, as far as how I looked. Um and just, you know, network with the girls a little bit more and see what it actually took to make the team. So that was something I learned and took with me to the Atlanta Hawks auditions, and that's why I think I made it. <laughs> so you are self-taught, and you've only not made a team once. <laughs> right? Got it. Can y'all do that? <laughs> right. I'm waiting. Right? <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about how long did you work on planning your business? Okay. So I actually started planning my business in an entrepreneurship class in high school. Um, mm -hmm. And they actually inspired us to, you know, create a website, create a business plan, uh, figure out a name and a mission. And so literally people won't, won't believe this, but I took that business plan and every year I just added to it. And, you know, just add some people looked it over and was like, you need to add this or take away this. Um, and so that's pretty much how I got started with that. Mm -hmm. So you've been working on it for 10 years, really? About 10 years. <laughs> Okay. But it's still not perfect. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Well, that's good. You just you take your idea and you elevate it each exactly. and every year. Exactly. Okay. Good exactly. to know. So tell us a little bit more about how much does someone have to have saved or how much funding is required when you are trying to start a business? Okay. So for the mobile studio, um, I don't think it took that much money. I think mm -hmm. the main things I spent money on was for the marketing materials. Obviously, for a website, there's sometimes a monthly fee or something associated with it. Um, and then most of it's like legal. So the Secretary of State, when you have to create an LLC and get a certificate, of a license, those are things that you have to pay yearly um, for. Um, other than that, for the the actual studio location, it was a lot. It was pretty penny. Um, <laughs> and that was mainly to get everything off the ground legal-wise. Um, as far as insurance, you have to pay monthly for that. 
and then <laughs> um and then of course like I have to pay rent every month for my for my lease for the studio so it's pretty costly I would say maybe about 15,000 just to get you started um, and people always ask me well how'd you do that you know um, so I once I graduated from college I did work for a corporation um, and I was able to purchase a home so I purchased my first home right out of college and people probably think that's so stupid that's dumb <laughs> but actually it was the biggest blessing I've you know and decision I've ever made so I, I bought the house and then maybe five years later I think maybe five years later I sold it and I was able to take a portion of it to put towards the studio and then I used other other savings um, from my mobile studio to put on down for the rest of the, the bill so it pretty much worked out so there's a lesson in that because what you just told us is you knew for what you wanted to have it was going to cost a certain price right even though you had this idea five six years earlier you weren't going to rush it all you right. wanted it to be right, right. from the start mm -hmm. exactly okay. yep mm -hmm. I wanted it to be right and, and planning had to be to a T, you know, but things happen and situations change. Um, so you just have to stay focused and really write everything down. Right. That's cute. Mm -hmm. So now that Move More mm -hmm. is a studio, mm -hmm. how do you gain customers and how do you keep those customers happy? Okay. So um, because our studio is almost the baby of our mobile studio, <laughs> which can get a little confusing, a lot of those kids who they're from age two to five and they're graduating preschool will come to the studio after they graduate from the mobile studio. So that's already mm -hmm. our first set of customers and clients. Um, and then we also use um, our feeder schools. So a lot of the schools in our area that don't have dance programs already in their school come to our studio. Um, and how we maintain it, we have great customer service. Um, we're I'm really good with following up with parents, making sure that they know to invest in their kids and keep them involved in extracurricular activities. Um, making sure that it's still affordable, so we don't raise prices out of nowhere. We you know we still make sure that their costumes are up to par, and we throw an amazing recital at the end of each season to keep them coming back for more. Season as in winter, spring, summer, fall. winter, summer, spring, fall. Yep. So we do a summer camp as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about just uh, just briefly how you planned for your studio to be what it is today. Okay, so I, there are a few people that I admire um, who have recently opened a dance studio or some type of fitness studio. Uh, I partnered with them, making sure that my business plan was perfect, almost flawless, which is still not. But I partnered with them to make sure that um, everything that I needed to open the studio was there. Um, they gave me advice um, on legal things, financial advice, uh, marketing advice. And, you know, I pretty much went off of what they told me. And I, even from, from purchasing mirrors to, you know, finding the perfect space and the location, um, you just have to know your area, know your demographic, know that, know who you're targeting, know the audience that you want to come to your studio, the customers that you want. Um, so we focus on that. And then as far as pricing and things like that, you also have to know, okay, what works for this community? What does not work for this community? Um, picking my space was was one of the hardest decisions I had to, to make in the whole process because it, and there needed to be a need for that, that space in that area. And there was, um, and which is why I think the clientele will continue to grow because they don't have that in that community. And there's plenty of ways to go get funding for your studio space. Um, you can go through grants. Um, so many people would just sponsor your, your programs. And that's one something I'm learning how to take advantage of right now. You don't have to take everything out of pocket. Um, there's also processes that you can go through to get a loan. Um, that's, one step that you definitely need to do is going ahead and getting your EIN number, which is a tax ID for your business. It's similar to a social security number for your business. Um, and then you start a bank account, you know, start saving for the business now. You don't actually have to open it, but at least you can start funding for it now. Um, yeah, so those are some really important steps right there. Just making sure that, you know, you have someone that you look up to that's doing exactly what you're doing. And sometimes they can tell you how to do it better. All right, Jasmine, so now I want to ask you for a little bit more of your advice. Can you tell us what advice do you have for dance lovers who aspire to start their own dance company one day? Okay, um, I would definitely say to stay motivated in what you're trying to do and stay loyal to the 
the vision that you have for your space and for your studio. Um, and then for dancers who you know really love what they do, continue to perfect your craft. Um, I joined a dance team in college, and then I joined um, the Atlanta Hawks cheerleaders just to become a better dancer and you know get involved more and stay involved in the community, learning more about dance and how to teach. Um, so I would definitely say if you want to do something, you got to be knowledgeable about it. So continue to do your research, continue to partner with people who know what they're doing and stay connected to someone that is your role model in that field. Um, so yeah. <laughs> All right. So what advice do you have for those who have an idea, but just don't have a way of getting the funds ready to actually launch it? Hmm, that's a good idea. Um, I think for me, initially, I don't think I had the funds as well to start my mobile studio. Uh, <laughs> what happened was I quit all of my corporate jobs and I had no money. And so I had a lot of bills, so I had to still find a way to make money. So what I did was I went to all of these daycare centers out of nowhere, just went up to them and said, okay, I have this dance vision, this program that I would like to offer your students. And, you know, just my passion and my drive alone you know, I guess was enough to motivate them to let me do my programs there at the school. And eventually it started making money. So I think that for, for people who don't have money, there's a way to make it. You just have to stay passionate, stay driven and stay focused. And other people will see what you're trying to do and believe in it and help you do that and help you succeed. So Perfect. <laughs> you want to make an appearance? You want to make an appearance? You got to be cool. Okay. Jasmine, what advice do you have for those who do have a dance company but are struggling to get clientele? Okay, I would encourage you to find other streams of revenue. So one thing that we do at the studio is we um, create a competition team, which um, also provides us with a little bit more money and a little income. I um, also encourage people to do camps um, over breaks for the students. Since they're out of school, it's a perfect way for them to learn, um, network, and you know meet new friends, but also make some more money for the studio. Um, I also offer art classes and other performing arts programs um, to keep them involved. And we network. So so I get as many people to the studio as possible and spread the word through our through our friends and family. So, okay. So Jasmine, last question: What advice do you have for aspiring entrepreneurs everywhere? Okay, for all my entrepreneurs out there, um, find something that you love, and that's going to pretty much keep you motivated and doing it every single day. Um, I don't, couldn't really imagine myself trying to build a business that I did not care about. I love to dance, I love cheerleading, and I love to stay fit and healthy. So it's very easy for me to come up with programs and different things to keep my business growing, uh, both of them actually. And so even the new one that I want to start is about dance. So I want to start a clothing uh, line for dance. And I'm just very motivated about it and I love it. So definitely stay focused on what you love to do. All right. I lied. One more question. <laughs> and it's to finish my sentence. Oh. <laughs> I want more mirrors and move more to be the number one affordable and convenient dance company in Georgia. Okay. Ooh. Let's make it happen for Jasmine. <laughs> Well, that concludes today's interview. Jasmine, tell everyone what you have coming up and how to keep up with you. Okay, so we definitely have a lot of events and programs happening at the studio. Um, definitely a lot of camps as well. So if you can follow us on Instagram at More Mirrors Dance or Move More Studio. Um, also on Facebook at Move More Studio or More Mirrors Dance Company. And you can find out everything that we have going on this year. Perfect. Well, thank you, Jasmine, for today's interview. Absolutely. We wish you all the best of luck in starting your own dance company, and Jasmine, much success with hers. Yeah, you got this. Stay focused. Amen. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Okay.